Good morning. Hi, this is Brother Vic from Jesus is Lord Fellowship, and we are located at 2236 Massachusetts Avenue in Tom's River, and we welcome any Sunday. We'd love to see you, and actually we've been praying for you to come. This morning, at this special time of the year, we have Palm Sunday, we have Good Friday coming, and we have Easter Sunday on the way. So I wanted to talk about the greatest gift that was ever offered to mankind. And of course, we're talking about Jesus. Now, I have scripture that I wanted to read, and I'm going to read it. Uh, John 3.16, uh, John 3.16 through 21, and I'm going to be le le reading it from the New Living Translation. I checked out the different... Uh, translations, and I, and I like to read this one to you today. So please listen, settle down, and be ready to take the scripture into your spirit, and let it just be a blessing to you as it has been meant to be, okay? All right, here we go. John 3, 16 through 21, the New Living Translation. We're talking about the life's greatest gift. Verse 16, for this is how God Love the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. Verse 19, and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but the people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear that their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see they are doing what God wants them to do. And there's a verse in the Word of God I, before I continue. It says, let your light, Christians out there, let your light so shine before men that by your good works, you'll glorify your Father in heaven. We need to be an example. When we accept Jesus, he gave us all eternity. We should be rejoicing every day. The word of God says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And I want to tell you, since I received Jesus way back July 30th, 1983, I've been rejoicing. I've been shouting it from the rooftop what he has done for me. He has given me peace that surpasses all human understanding. You talk about a place of rest in your spirit and your soul, that's there for everyone, whosoever would receive the greatest gift. Now let's continue. Life's greatest gift. Everyone loves presents, right? We all love presents, yet many people reject the greatest gift ever given. This gift is God's Son, and the term only begotten expresses his uniqueness. There has never been anyone like Jesus, who is truly God and truly human. He is the only one who lived a perfect life and died as a sinless sacrifice in the place of sinful humanity. That would be us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. When God gave the gift of his son, mankind had two options. They could either accept Jesus by faith or reject him. This is the most important choice a person will ever make. Let me say that again. This is the most important choice a person will ever make because the outcome has eternal ramifications. We're only here for just a very short time, a breath. It's just, it's so short but we're talking about all eternity. So I'm gonna say that again. This is the most important choice a person ever could, will ever make because the outcome has eternal ramifications. God will one day judge the people he has created. He's created us, right? 
and that judgment will be on the basis of what they have done with the gift of his son. Those who believe in the Savior will not be condemned because they have received eternal life. However, John 3.18 of what we just read says, whosoever does, doesn't believe has already been judged and condemned for unbelief. The determining factor between the acceptors and the rejectors is the object of their love. Those who refuse God's son love their sin and don't want to ch change. But believers come to Christ because they love the truth and desire righteousness. Which one are you? As I read this, those who receive God's love, lo those who receive God's love, their sin, they love their sin and don't want to change. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what's got you bound up, what's ever got chains around your life, chains around whatever that thing is that got you and, and tempts you and you yield to that temptation, God will make a way for you. For he is a change breaker. He'll change, take the chains and take them right off of your life. You'll have freedom like you never knew before. You'll have peace no matter what comes your way. The Bible says in this world, we will have tribulations, but it also says, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. You can be an overcomer in Jesus Christ. At this special time of the year, I just implore you. I implore you to take time out and seek God with your heart. He says that he stands at the door of your heart and knocks. And the word of God says in Revelation, if anyone would hear his voice, he would come in and sup with you. He wants to be that friend that sticks closer than a brother. Will you accept him today? Will you seek him today? Will you be an acceptor and not a rejecter? It's all up to you. I pray that these words today touch your heart and this special time of the year, life's greatest gift is knocking at your heart right now. And he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I know it. I'm a believer. He changed my life. July 30th, 1983. I have never been the same. And I praise his name. Hallelujah to his name. Jesus is Lord. Let him be the Lord of your life is my prayer for you today. In Jesus' name, God bless. Happy Easter.